Using the principles of thermodynamics, we can study the interactions of a system with its surroundings. These interactions are in the form of heat and work. However, there is something missing. Did you notice none of these thermodynamic relations have time in them? And they do not contain any information about how these interactions are taking place. Now you may ask, why is this important? Why do I need time or the nature of these interactions? Especially when I can get the amount of heat transfer or the work done by simply using these thermodynamic principles. While that is entirely true, have you ever wondered why does a metal tumbler feel colder to touch than a ceramic mug, even though they are at the same temperature, temperature of your room? Or perhaps you would have noticed how blowing over a hot cup of coffee cools it down faster? Or why on a hot summer day you feel more comfortable in the shade and not out in the open, under the sun? Questions like these can't be answered using thermodynamics alone. And that is because the science of thermodynamics deals with the amount of heat transfer or the work done for a system that is undergoing a process from one state to the other. And it does not care about how long the process takes or its inherent nature. But in engineering, we are often interested in the rate of heat transfer and the means with which we can make it happen. This is the focus of this lesson. So let's get started. Simply put, heat transfer is the thermal energy in transit due to a temperature difference. If there is a temperature difference in a medium or between different media, heat transfer will occur. The transfer of energy as heat is always from the higher temperature medium to the lower temperature one. And this transfer stops when the two media reach the same temperature. This state is also known as thermodynamic equilibrium. Heat transfer is the phenomena which keeps our car engines from overheating. It is what keeps our homes warm during cold winter days and cool during hot summer days. Heat transfer helps us keep our food and drinks cool and fresh. It helps power our cities and keeps our electronics cool and running. Now this transfer of thermal energy can occur in three ways. It can happen via conduction, convection or radiation. These are the three modes of heat transfer. So let's look into them in detail. The first mode of heat transfer we'll be looking at is conduction. Conduction is the heat transfer that occurs when the temperature difference exists across a stationary medium. At the very fundamental level, it can be described as the transfer of energy from more energetic to less energetic particles of a substance via interaction between these particles at molecular levels. Conduction can take place in solids, liquids or gases. In order to understand this mechanism, let's consider a gas occupying a space between two surfaces. These surfaces are being maintained at different temperatures. And due to this, we get a temperature gradient across the gas, but without any bulk motion. Remember, the gas is stationary. Temperature at any point in this gas can be associated with the energy of random translational, internal rotational and vibrational motion of the gas molecules. And as one might expect, higher molecular energies 
are associated with higher temperatures. Now these random motions will certainly lead to molecular collisions, which helps in the transfer of energy from more energetic molecules to the less energetic ones. And in this way, the energy is transferred by conduction in the direction of decreasing temperature. In the case of liquids, the mechanism of conduction is the same as the molecules are closely spaced and the molecular interactions are stronger and even more frequent than gases. However, in the case of solids, conduction is not associated with the motion of the particles but with the atomic activity in the form of lattice vibrations. If the solid happens to be an electrical conductor, the translational motion of free electrons also contributes towards energy transfer. Now that we have an understanding of the mechanism of conduction heat transfer, let's formalize it in more specific engineering terms. Generally, any heat transfer process can be quantified in terms of appropriate rate equations. These are used to compute the amount of energy being transferred per unit time. Consider a one-dimensional wall which has two surfaces being maintained at T1 and T2 and a distance delta x apart. Fourier observed that the heat transfer was from the hotter side to the colder side and it was higher when the temperature difference was higher. On the other hand, if the distance between the two sides was large or in the other words, if the wall was thick, the heat transfer was lower. This is the Fourier's law of heat conduction, which states that the heat flux resulting from thermal conduction is proportional to the temperature gradient. The negative sign is due to the fact that heat transfer is in the direction of decreasing temperature, that is, opposite to the positive gradient. Consider a steady state condition now, when the temperature gradient is linear and the heat flux is simply given by this relation. The parameter K is a material property known as thermal conductivity. Materials that have higher thermal conductivity allow a higher heat transfer through them compared to materials that have lower heat conductivity. And that is why that metal tumbler feels colder to hold compared to that ceramic mug. So far, we have talked about heat transfer via molecular interactions only and without any bulk motion of the fluid. Remember, the medium was stationary. Now, if we add some bulk motion of the fluid, or in other words, the high energy particles not only provide energy to the neighboring particles via collision, but now they move and they take that energy from one place to the other then this mode of heat transfer is called convection. Convection refers to the heat transfer between a surface and a moving fluid when there is a temperature difference between the two. If the surface temperature is greater than the temperature of the fluid flow, convection heat transfer occurs from the surface and into the outer flow. If the temperature of the flowing fluid is greater than the surface, then the convection heat transfer occurs from the outer flow and into the surface. Just like the hydrodynamic boundary layer, when the surface and the flow temperature differs, there will be a region of fluid where the temperature will vary from the surface temperature to the temperature of the outer flow. This region is called the thermal boundary layer. Within the boundary layer, convection heat transfer is carried out via both 
random molecular motion and the bulk motion of the fluid. The contribution due to the random molecular motion dominates near the surface where the fluid velocity is low. Due to the no-slip condition at the surface, the fluid velocity is zero and heat is transferred via diffusion only. The contribution due to the bulk motion comes from the fact that the boundary layer grows as the flow progresses in the X direction. In effect, the heat that is conducted into this layer is swept downstream and is eventually transferred to the fluid outside the boundary layer. And it is for this reason that fluid mechanics plays a vital role in our analysis of convection. The rate of the convection heat transfer process is given by the Newton's law of cooling, as shown here. Here, Ts is the temperature of the solid surface and T infinity represents the temperature of the fluid flowing over this surface. In this equation, H is the convection heat transfer coefficient and it depends on the conditions in the boundary layer. This can be influenced by surface geometry, the nature of the fluid flow and various fluid thermodynamic and transport properties. Based on the nature of the fluid flow, convection heat transfer can be classified into two categories. The first type is known as forced convection, where the flow is caused by external means such as by a fan, a pump or atmospheric winds. Remember that cup of hot coffee? Blowing air over it to cool it down, that's basically forced convection. Free or natural convection, on the other hand, deals with convection heat transfer where flow is induced by buoyancy forces, which are caused by density differences arising due to the temperature variations in the fluid. The simplest example of this type of convection is boiling of water in a kettle or a saucepan. Till now, we have talked about heat transfer in a stationary medium and heat transfer in a medium in motion. But what if there is no medium present between the hot and the cold bodies? Can we get any heat transfer when there is no medium between the two? The answer is yes. And this brings us to the third type of heat transfer called radiation. Radiation is the emission of energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. All matter at non-zero temperature emits thermal radiation. This emission is due to changes in the electron configurations of the atoms or molecules. And this energy is transported via electromagnetic waves or photons. In the absence of an intervening medium, there is a net heat transfer by radiation between two surfaces at different temperatures. This is how the thermal energy from Sun reaches Earth. The rate of energy release per unit area is called the surface emissive power. The maximum rate of radiation that can be emitted from a surface at an absolute temperature of Ts is given by the Stephen Boltzmann law, as shown here. Here, sigma is the Stephen Boltzmann constant. The idealized surface that emits radiation at this maximum rate is called a black body. And the radiation emitted by a black body is called black body radiation. The heat flux emitted by a real body is always less than that of a black body. And this is given by this equation. Here, epsilon is the emissivity, which is a measure of how effectively a surface emits energy relative to a black body. It depends on the material of the surface and its finish. 
just like the emissivity there is another important property of a surface called absorptivity it is the fraction of the radiation energy incident on the surface that is absorbed by the surface just like emissivity its value also lies between 0 and 1 and the maximum value of 1 is associated with <laughs> you guessed it right the black body so in other words a black body is a perfect absorber and also a perfect emitter interesting the rate at which radiant energy is absorbed by unit surface area can be evaluated using this equation if the surface is opaque portions of the irradiation are reflected however if the surface is semi transparent portion of the irradiation may also be transmitted now that we have an idea of the underlying mechanisms of radiation let's formalize the radiation heat transfer consider the radiation exchange between a small surface at t1 and a much larger isothermal surface which is completely surrounding the smaller surface at t2 we assume that the surface is a gray surface meaning the absorptivity is equal to the emissivity for the surface the net rate of radiation heat transfer per unit area from the surface can be expressed by the expression shown here this equation represents the difference between the thermal energy being released due to radiation emission and that which is being absorbed so to summarize in this lesson we talked about three modes of heat transfer which are conduction convection and radiation we also discussed their underlying physics and the means to compute the heat transfer flux corresponding to each of these three modes heat transfer is a complex phenomena and more often than not multiple modes of heat transfer are at play at the same time consider for example the cooling of a cpu as your cpu works it generates heat it starts to make it hot if this heat is left unchecked the temperatures can get so high that it can burn the chip causing permanent damage therefore engineers designed cooling systems which first draws the heat from the chip into the heat sinks and fins via conduction and then a mechanical fan blows air over these fins in order to cool the fins down via convection and of course not to mention the radiation heat transfer that is always taking place the entire time this is just one example among numerous engineering applications that you can find all around you which rely on the principles of heat transfer